Many formulas used for uncertainty propagation can be derived from the quadrature formula. On this slide, we will briefly state the quadrature formula, and on the next slide, we will derive it. f is a function of both a and b. As the values of a and b fluctuate in the horizontal plane, the value of f fluctuates vertically. f explores a variety of values. To describe its distribution, we want to express its standard deviation. The fluctuations in the variable f are owing in part to fluctuations in a. This contribution is described using two factors. In order for fluctuations in a to contribute to fluctuations in f, a must in the first place have fluctuations. The distribution of a must have width meaning a non-zero standard deviation, sigma a. If there are no fluctuations in a, then fluctuations in a cannot contribute to fluctuations in f. Not only must a fluctuate, but additionally, varying the value of a must also correspond to varying the value of f. The blue arrow is locally parallel to the slope of the golden surface along the a direction, with b held fixed. The illustrated blue arrow has both vertical and horizontal components. If the blue arrow had, instead, indicated no vertical rise along the A direction, then local fluctuations in A would not cause F to vary. As described in more detail in the video tutorial on partial differentiation, this steepness is notated partial F partial A. Here, the slope is evaluated around the average position around which A and B fluctuate. AV stands for average. The fluctuations in the variable F are also owing in part to fluctuations in B. This contribution is described using two analogous factors. In order for fluctuations in B to contribute to fluctuations in F, B must, in the first place, have fluctuations. The distribution of b must have width, meaning a non-zero standard deviation, sigma b. If there are no fluctuations in b, then fluctuations in b cannot contribute to fluctuations in f. Not only must b fluctuate, but additionally, varying the value of b must also correspond to varying the value of f. The pink arrow is parallel to the slope of the golden surface in the b direction with a held fixed. The illustrated pink arrow has both vertical and horizontal components. If the pink arrow had instead indicated no vertical rise along the B direction, then local fluctuations in B would not cause F to vary. The steepness of the pink arrow is notated partial F partial B, again evaluated at the average position around which A and B fluctuate. If the fluctuations in A and the fluctuations in B are statistically independent, then the standard deviation in F resulting from fluctuations in A and fluctuations in B is the square root of the sum of the products of contributing squared partial derivatives and contributing standard deviations, as shown. Adding squared quantities in this way is referred to as addition in quadrature, and we will refer to this formula as the quadrature formula of uncertainty propagation. This product of squared factors, collected in a blue brace, is the square of the vertical change in f that results when variable a is horizontally shifted a distance equal to its standard deviation, sigma a, starting with both variables a and b originally at their average values. The product of a slope multiplied by a run gives back a rise, in this case a vertical change in f. In an analogous way, this product of squared factors collected in a pink brace is the square of the vertical change in f that results when, instead, variable b is horizontally shifted a distance equal to its standard deviation, sigma b, again starting with both variables a and b originally at their average values. Writing out the quadrature formula in terms of explicit squares of differences, instead of using partial derivatives, provides an alternative form sometimes more convenient to use for numerical computation. We want to justify the quadrature formula. If the fluctuations in A and B are both in a sense small, then we can locally approximate F around the average values of A and B using a two-dimensional first-order Taylor expansion. 
we are assuming that the first order partial derivatives are non vanishing. F can differ from its average value when A is displaced from its average value, when B is displaced from its average value, or when both A and B are displaced from their average values. There are two variables on the right hand side of this equation. They are A and B. The constants in this expression are the quantities surrounded by angle brackets, along with the partial derivatives evaluated at the average values of A and B. Together, these form an additive constant that we refer to as kappa. Writing kappa out front leaves behind two products. The first is the slope of f along the a direction multiplied by the value of a, and the second is the slope of f along the b direction multiplied by b. We refer to these products as functions alpha of a and beta of b, respectively. f is a sum of kappa, alpha, and beta. We assume that the fluctuations in A and B are statistically independent. This means that whatever jiggles kappa, alpha, and beta might have, the jiggles in kappa, the jiggles in alpha, and the jiggles in beta are all statistically independent of each other. As a consequence, the variance of F is the sum of the variances of kappa, of alpha, and of beta. Kappa does not fluctuate. The variance in alpha is the average of the square of alpha evaluated at an individual value of a minus the average value of alpha, meaning averaged across the distribution of values of a. The slope of f in the a direction appears twice. As we said, this is a constant. Bring this factor out of the innermost pair of averaging brackets then bring it further outside the squared parentheses, and then outside the outermost pair of averaging brackets. The variance of alpha equals the square of the partial derivative of f with respect to a, multiplied by the average of the square of the difference between a and its average value. The average of the square of a minus its average value is simply the variance of a spelled out. Substituting the variance of alpha back into the variance for f and performing analogous steps for beta and b provides the quadrature formula. In this derivation, we relied on the assumption that fluctuations in a and b were statistically independent. This allowed us to write the variance in f as a sum of the variance in alpha and the variance in beta. It is important to remember that the validity of the quadrature formula is not universal. Its derivation relies on an assumption of statistically independent fluctuations.